Hi, I'm Ricky Craven, and I'm one half of this great story. I remember the first time I walked into Darlington and thought, what in the hell have I gotten into? <laughs> There's nothing I've done in a race car that's prepared me for this racetrack. I made up my mind that if I could only win one race in my career, I wanted it to be at the toughest track on the circuit, and I went to work. I'm Kurt Busch, and I'm the other half of this story. Darlington is something very, very special. I just, I love the way the tires drop off and the way you have to qualify is one thing. The way you have to race is another thing. And then it's the competition that you have to settle at the end. And that's what Ricky and I both knew that day. Race the racetrack. That's your biggest competition, is not the competitors. It's this mile and a third racetrack. It has the speed of a super speedway and requires the technique of a short track. You have to, to know your car's setup, feel, speed, but at the same time, which is no, rule number one, the racetrack is in charge. So you have two drivers, each trying to make a name for themselves, each trying to win on NASCAR's most historic track where neither had ever won, and both refusing to lose. And as we closed in on Kurt with a few laps to go, we were so much faster that I thought it was going to be a relatively easy pass. It wasn't. Somebody's got to give getting into turn one. Nobody. But when I watch these two drivers in those closing laps, they totally dropped their guard. They forgot about it being Darlington. With two, three laps to go, it just doesn't matter, right? I mean, it's you're just going to do whatever you need to do. You're going to do whatever it takes to win. You can see Ricky Craven, he is giving everything he has in that race car. And when he gets below him right there and Kurt Busch is in the wall, Craven's going to drive away. The back of the car came loose. He retaliated. And I, I came to the realization he's not going to allow me to get by. So one and two, I'm fine. Three and four, this is a tougher corner. Kurt Busch goes to the bottom. I went, watch Craven. Look at the run he gets up on the high side. I dropped it down in there. And I'm just like, not even looking in the mirror. I came off the accelerator here because it's not going to happen. But three and four is where the magic was. This is where I froze. Kurt Busch saw what happened the lap before. He's not going to give up the top side. He moves up the racetrack. I have enough momentum to make another attempt. This lets Ricky Craven go to the bottom. When most drivers were letting off the gas, I was going back to the gas right here. Look at the run Craven gets right there. Right there, that wiggle. I'm full throttle. And this is where I set it. It's going to be a drag race. I turn as hard left as I can. They touch, they touch. I don't know how you combine racing and wrecking into one word, but that's what they were doing. Craven got him. Craven got him. Craven got him. Craven. I knew I needed to go to, to victory right. lane and just give Ricky a hug like, dude, we just Something just happened. We, we caught a glimpse with a camera shot of Kurt walking to Victory Lane. And I think all of us, and I, I'm pretty sure Ricky Craven was thinking the same thing. Kurt Busch is going to Victory Lane, and he's not going to be a happy camper. And at the last second, he says, that was awesome. <laughs> there is no sport where you see a guy that finished second go congratulate the guy that beat him. And what I'm so proud of is that we both ran as hard as we did and crossed the finish line like we did, and nobody wrecked, nobody spun out. I knew that there was something special that happened within all that. I got to experience hitting a walk-off home run in the bottom of the ninth inning, and everyone in attendance and everyone that took three and a half hours of their day and tuned in on Fox they were able to experience it along with me. You know, I think you, you look at the grandstands, and I think the fans on their feet speak for the significance of this finish. I don't think I completely digested how meaningful the race was until I retired, and I had time to reflect on it. And in a lot of people's opinion, this was, well, it was among the greatest finishes of NASCAR's 75 years. And I'm grateful I was a part of it. But it's so emotional because I know 
that I gave everything that I could to win that race. And what's even tougher right now, just looking at this is, that was 2003. I've never won at Darlington. It was my last win. It was the only time my children were in victory lane with me. That to be his last win, I never knew that would happen. I didn't know that then, now I see it. But I didn't know that that was the, the bottom of the ninth inning. But I think we all knew it was the bottom of the first inning for Kurt. Maybe I'll tell this story another few times, which will be over 2,000, and I'll win one day. But the way that um, Craven and I have always talked about this is we both won. And it's always cool to, to share that moment with Ricky, with NASCAR, and the closest finish ever at, at a track too tough to tame, Darlington. That's not supposed to happen there. And that's, that's what makes it that much more special. And if I could tell myself something as, as a young, you gave everything you could. And I'm actually proud of you for the way that you handled it. Of all the race calls that we've been able to have at a checkered flag, I don't think we'll ever be able to top this one right here. And I bet you 20 to 25 years from now, we'll still be talking about this finish because you just don't have finishes like this at Darlington Raceway.